Thank you everyone for joining us today for grant writing session. Next slide. We'll just go through some Zoom etiquette for participants. Change your name, turn on your camera, raise your hand, or click on the reaction and raise your hands if you have any questions. Be respectful. Show respect to everyone in the room. Be kind in your words and action. Use the chat box. Do not hesitate to ask questions. If you have some, there is no such a bad question. And mute your mics to avoid the interruption and only unmute yourself when speaking. We'll just like to acknowledge the first people and the traditional land where we are working. We will just take a few minutes to read this slide. A little bit about Empower for X. Empower for X is a business consulting firm. We support all the entrepreneurs by providing a co working and business service membership as well as training and consulting. We can help you with the business planning, operational, financial projections, bookkeeping, grant writing, and marketing strategies. We have various offerings depending on where you are in your journey from ideation to scaling up. We offer many different training programs that can help you level up your business. We have the Social Entrepreneur Enterprise Certification Program, Mental Health Standard Certification, Mental Health Supporting Youth Certification, and Grant Hunter U. We offer many uh, different services for the startup to establish we have virtual office in three locations, Brampton, Scarborough, and Ottawa. We have consulting services as well, marketing, grant writing, technology, management, business planning, and we do best ground promotional live, live shows as well. About uh, our grant writing service, DIY, we do it for your for you free share. like we have free sessions we have grant review we find a summary for you we do a blueprints we review and there are paid sessions as well writing groups which you can participate and we modify you for uh, and we do it for you we do have the upcoming events coming uh here is like a registered barcode which you can use it and uh, to events you scan, you will be able to see the our grant writing info sessions, working groups, the AI to modify CVs, monthly networking social events, and final liter financial literacy uh, literacy sessions. Our valued partners are Alternate Saving, Sheridan, Edge, Kalabash, Toronto Community Benefits Network, Stream Legacy Foundation, and One Full Serve. We just appreciate them. And today's ad agenda is to meet the facilitator, overview of grants and loans, and how we can help. Today's facilitator is Ryan Knight, a social, a serial social entrepreneur, detailing Knight Service Kingdom, Executive Power of Black Panther Cage co-founder of Afro-Caribbean Business Network, and he's also an E4X business crew. He, he's helping businesses to increase the capacity and create an asset to the grow generational world. He, Brian, you can take over the session and we're happy to have you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, uh, Shristi. 
and really good to be here with everyone that has taken time to come and learn about different grants that are out there here at our info session. Uh, one quick thing that I do want to ask in the chat, if you can put if you're a nonprofit or a for profit, and if you could put the name of your company, and also if you've written a grant before, or if this would be like your first grant, because there's certain grants that are better if it's your first one. And there's certain ones that are better if you've written some before because they're a bit more complex. So I'm curious to find out if like going through this session, it'll be learning about like the first grant that you're going to write or if it's if you've written some before, because I know last month we no earlier this month was the deadline for the Foundation for Black Communities. And that was a big grant that I was encouraging a lot of us to apply for because it is one of the few that uh, if you're a nonprofit, it was definitely excellent if you're doing work to support the Black community. Also, if you're a for-profit, it was great to learn about how to create a positive community project. So not so much applying with your for-profit, but still being able to apply and partnering with organizations like ACBN so that you can get your applications in. Those types of collaborations I'm going to be talking about, it's really important to understand the different ways you can approach grants and we're here to support you along that whole journey so uh let me just a bit of background with the acbn i'm one of the co-founders of the afro-caribbean business network so we support entrepreneurs of african and caribbean heritage really to figure out what stage their businesses are in and then help them create a strategy to grow their companies exponentially we have been around for just over six years. And over those six years, we've been able to engage with over 5,000 Black entrepreneurs. We're seeing a large percentage of them are female founders. And in our network, there's about 90% of them are the CEOs or the founder. But what we're most proud of is actually being able to partner with other Black-focused business organizations. So now there's over 40 across Canada, so our reach has really expanded. So no matter what stage of business you're in or wherever you are in Canada, there is a way to be able to connect you to the right resources that you need uh, for your business or your nonprofit as well. One thing that I always like to touch on is I believe entrepreneurship is one of the best tools that we can use to support, you know, building generational wealth, Research shows it's the best way to pull a community out of poverty. So if you're working with different underestimated communities, always try to introduce entrepreneurship because that's one of the best ways that we've seen to build uh, economic empowerment. And of course, with economic empowerment, we need to do these types of convening so that we can be meeting and sharing notes. And that's really why we do the info sessions because the info sessions allow us to one, share what's out there, what's available. And then two, uh, we can also invite you to working groups where we actually pick one of the grants. We're able to apply for it together as a group. So that way we're able to go through every single question. So today we're more so gonna be talking about what's out there and what's available. So if you've never written grants before, it's a great time to ask questions. Also, if you have, and maybe there's certain grants that you've seen that I didn't cover, please feel free to let me know about it because we can do research and see if it's something that we can support others with. And of course, that access to funding is why we're here. And we want to get really comfortable with understanding the process. I know when we're going after grants and writing grants, there's a certain language that funders want to see. There's a certain process to different types of grants and how to apply. So sometimes just the process will derail us. We want to try and do these info sessions so that we get comfortable with understanding the process so that anything that's out there, we definitely want to go after and we don't want to miss the money just because we didn't get a grant in. And so when we're talking about missing the money, I like to show this slide just to give you an idea of the types of grants that we've been able to get in the past. And they've ranged from as low as $500 all the way up to over $1.3 million. And again, different types of grants ranging from uh, pitch competitions, uh, grants from the city, grants from the province, grants from the federal government, or even uh, support from corporations through sponsorship and donations. 
So one thing that I don't consider myself a academic grant writer, like a PhD, I more consider myself a grant hunter and always looking out for what types of funding, what funding do we qualify for and making sure that we get our applications in. And then once we get it in, hey, if it's successful, bonus. If it's not successful, we can still learn from it and then put in the application again. So I really wanted to give an overview that there's a lot of money flowing around us. We need to position ourselves in front of that flow of money. And the more times that we do that, the more successful you'll be. And again, every single time you're always getting better. So do not get discouraged if you write a grant for the first time. I saw in the chat a few people, uh, this is gonna like you haven't written a grant before. A lot of times after that first grant, you might get declined and you get discouraged. I encourage you to stick with it. Keep joining us for these monthly sessions to see what else is out there. And again, if you really feel stuck, uh, book a call with us so that we can support you and make sure that you feel as comfortable as possible getting in the next grants. And of course, we showed kind of the different grants that we've been able to get. But what really counts to us is being able to support others in getting funding. And I think in the future, we're going to start to upgrade or update this slide to show more success stories. Because yes, a nonprofit like Rescue Youth International doing great work in the Peel region, especially with youth facing um, you know, trouble in the education and the justice system, but not having the bandwidth to always go after grants. So us being able to work with them to make sure that they found a grant that they qualified for, was able to get it in and were successful. And then on the other side for a for-profit like Custodia, where again, they didn't realize that they're operating as a social enterprise, they were they qualified for a specific grant that was out the investment readiness program. So we were able to support them in making sure that they got their application in so that, and they were successful. So $100,000 could have been lost just because they didn't realize that they qualified for that grant. And an organization like New Life Project, where a lot of funding was being announced, they didn't really understand how to navigate it. We were able to work with them make sure to get the application in, and then they were successful. And so we've been slowly tallying up a lot of the success stories over the last year. And we've actually surpassed over a million dollars in clients that we've worked with that have been able to be successful and get funding, or even just people coming to info sessions like this, finding out about a grant, making sure to get it in, and then they're being successful. So we want you to be part of those success stories. So we're gonna be following up with you to see what grants you might go for and which ones you're successful with. And then one last piece where a lot of people sometimes get stuck because they don't qualify for a specific grant, but this is where partnership comes into play because with our organization, the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, we've been able to be a trustee for those that are looking for specific grants that they might not qualify for they might be a for-profit or they need to be uh, more, I guess, uh, experienced, like their organization has to be around for a longer time, have certain financials. So we've been able to play that role of trustee. So for example, with the Seventh Adventist Church, they wanted to go for a grant. Uh, we had the expertise to lead the grant so that we can get the money for them and their project. And even a uh, youth village where we were able to add an organization to a grant that we were already writing because they were new and upcoming. They didn't have the expertise to go for the grant themselves, but by partnering uh, partnering with us and going on to our grant, we were able to get them funding so that the launch of their organization wasn't only coming from the founder's pockets, which can be very stressful. So all that to say, uh, two ways that we support you in getting prepared. One is through preparing your business plan. So especially if you're a for-profit company, you want to make sure that your business plan is solid when you're going after different types of funding, but also the grant writing blueprint. And this is where you really have two options. There's one option where uh, we share with you kind of what the blueprint is about, and then you can figure it out on your own through our course. We call it Grant Hunter University. So if you want to go kind of self-paced and just watch all the videos for each of the sections, we also do challenges around it. So sometimes we'll spend a whole week 
working with a group of people to get this grant writing blueprint done. And the reason that the blueprint is really important, because a lot of times, every time we find a grant, we're starting from scratch. So what I found, and when I was looking for grants with the Detailing Nights, even though we had this youth entrepreneurship program, we were able to support, you know, teaching high school students and even those out of school how to start their own businesses by running a mini version of our company. We thought we had this great program, yet still we weren't getting the grants. And it wasn't until we brought on a grant writer, we partnered with a nonprofit, and then that grant that we put in was really solid and was successful and that we were able to get, uh, I think it was $210,000 over three years. It was the most that we'd ever gotten at that time. And that what we wrote became the blueprint. So what we try to do for you is help you write a strong blueprint so that any grant that you find, you're able to apply and feel more confident because that grant that we got, that was back in 2016, that became the blueprint and allowed us to be more successful with other grants that we'd written in the future. So being able to help you write your own grant blueprint allows you to now apply for grants a lot easier. So if that is of interest, we'll definitely share with you ways to connect with us so we can help you do it either by our self-study, our core online course, or we can work alongside you and get it done with you. So one thing that we typically talk about is great ways to research what grants are out there. So I'm gonna jump into this link. Actually, let me make sure that it takes us to the right place because it started to give errors. Hold on, let me fix this. And then I'll put this link into the chat. So if you'd like to follow along, this is one of the uh, tools that we use to research what grants are out there. We also have this funding spreadsheet that we try to keep as up to date as possible. And you'll notice there's three other ones that we use to research what grants are out there. So there's Happily, there's Hello Pocketed, and the Business Benefits Finder. So the Business Benefits Finder, I'll do an example. So all three of them pretty much work the same. You answer questions about your business and then it'll create or it'll scrape all the different funding that is available for your business or for your nonprofit. So let's say we wanna grow and expand. And then let's see, Tell us about your, okay, so where are you located? Oh, we're not Northern, we are Southern. We are in education. Oh, this is interesting. So now it's telling you that you're able, like how many results you're gonna see based on what you're putting in. Oh, this is like updated. Okay, so they wanna know how many employees. Right, revenue range, we are between there, we are incorporated. I'll do it for the nonprofit and see what comes up. Actually, no, I'll do it for the for profit first. Right. And then people that are in our organization, so the Black Canadians, women, newcomers under 40, and so this is where you can decide if you only want to see uh, open programs and ones that are closed, but you can see kind of what you qualify for. So now it's saying, okay, see your 27 results. All right. So you can actually save this search. Actually, I will do that later. All right, so you can see for the grant funding, let's see which ones are out here. So they have something called Rise Up, support for women founded or co-founded companies. That one seems new. I haven't seen that one there before. Uh, summer company is coming up. So during the summer months, if you're under 30 and in school, you're able to get up to $3,000 to start a business during the summer. They have this removing barriers. 
they have the Rays one. The Rays one actually closed at the end of last year. But what they're doing is right now they're going through all the applications. So anybody that didn't fill out their application properly, they're going to be opening it up again. So stay tuned for this one in case it reopens. They have this one if you need to hire. They have IRAP again if you need to hire. Start a company plus. So start a company plus. If you're 18 and over, you're able to get up to $5,000 as a grant to help to build out your business. And this one is, so starter company and summer company, those two are connected with the local entrepreneur centers in your city. So if you're a city, I know Toronto has one, Mississauga, Brampton, I believe the Durham region has one. Check to see if your city has a small business, a small business entrepreneurship center and they run the summer company and the starter company. And they typically have a lot of great resources that you can tap into. So it's really good to let them know that you exist, get on their newsletter. So when any of these grants come open, you'll be one of the first to know. So I know they have the Canada job grant. So if you do wanna train your employees, you can get up to $10,000 to cover those costs as a grant. And Digital Main Street, we're gonna to touch on shortly. So this tool, and I put the link into the chat and I'll put it one more time. It's a couple of people came in after. So this is something, that, this is really where I would start. And then for these programs, I'll put these into the chat as well. I think that'll work. No, this one didn't work. <laughs> So I'm make it clickable. All right. So if you want to check out these two, and again, it's kind of you're filling in the blanks and then it'll help you identify which ones you qualify for. So let me go back to presentation. All right. So we did want to touch on a few of these grants. The first one being the Black Opportunity Fund, which is a program designed in partnership with CIBC. So initially, CIBC created a loan program where you're able to get up to $250,000 to support uh, your business. So that could be with leasehold improvements, buying equipment, or also getting working capital. But they also noticed that all the entrepreneurs that might have been wanting to go for the, the loan didn't have, let's say, their business plan completely done, or they want to improve it or their cash flow projections. So in partnership with the Black Opportunity Fund and the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, they were able to create a grant program where you can get support with improving your financial literacy, creating your business plan, uh, creating your financial projections, and also improving your credit score. And these program offerings, once you complete them, you're able to get grants of up to $2,000. So this was a great way to prepare for a grant that's or for the loan program that CIBC had, but you can also just go directly through the grant program if you're not interested in the loan program. So they do break down, and I'll put this link into the chat so you can check it out as well. But down here, where you can go to Elevate Black Business, and that link seems odd. So let's go to blackchamber.ca. Uh, and this way, you're able to get through to the, the loan program or the grant program directly. Afro. So yes, this Avro one would be the best one to check out. So you can put that in here. So if you go to blackchamber.ca and you go through any of these programs, you, you'd be able to plug into their grant programs. So if you're not interested in the uh, CIBC loan, you can still go through the Black Chamber for some of their programs. All right. So the other one, actually, I'll touch on Bates first. We already talked about Summer Company and Starter Company. But Bates is another one where Typically, I give this website as your homework for uh, this evening, 
because the application process is very smooth. And one thing is they do have a backlog of, you know, getting through the applications. So you want to make sure and get in the queue as fast as you can. But the Bates program was created to support entrepreneurs with getting business services done. So you'll see the other program where you could go through three to six months to get your business plan done. If you wanted it done a bit quicker, you can go through something like Bayes and they would partner you with an expert service provider. So somebody that does business plans, somebody that does cash flow projections or an accounting and bookkeeping. And then once that's done for you, they would invoice the BBPA through the Bates program. So you wouldn't have to come out of pocket to get those things done. So this is a great program. If you know, you know, you want to get it done, you don't really have the time to go through a program. You can just get connected with a service provider and then get the business plan done for you. And the applications here, really straightforward. It's contact info. They do want you to talk a little bit about your business and how it's structured. And then you'll see the services. So you can pick one of these. So the business planning and the accounting, typically those are the two areas that stop people from getting funding. So I would definitely look at that if you're looking to either get a loan, micro loan, or a line of credit, making sure your business plan is on point and your accounting is done is really crucial. So this program will help you get it done. And I'll put this one into the link, into the chat as well for you. So please do uh, go to this website, save it. And this evening or after this call, I would take some time and apply for this one. I did see a hand go up. Hope oh, you can go ahead. As Harvest. As Harvest. Oh, sorry. I forgot to change my name. Um, <laughs> hi, Ryan. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Um, so I wanted to ask, are those the only three options? in terms of what services uh, they would address? Yes, so for now, I know when it initially launched, there were more options, but they did pare it down to these three, I guess they're streamlined a bit of the service. Okay, thank you. Yes, no worries. All right, and so we'll jump to the next one, which is Digital Main Street. All right. So Digital Main Street has two components, but their main one that I've seen them really advertising is the Shop Here program. So Shop Here allows you to get connected with, uh, again, an expert service provider that will actually build your website for you. And they'll build a website that you can do e-commerce with. So you're able to uh, sell your products. So sometimes it's a Shopify store, or I've seen they've used uh, Square Up. And there's also one other one a couple other options. So if you don't have a website, I would definitely uh, sign up for this one because you're going to get one built for you for free. And even if you do have a website, let's say you want to improve it or add e-commerce to it so you can sell through the website. Again, I would sign up for this program. And what they've been doing is if you sign up for this program, they then introduce you to their marketing grant, which you can get up to the $2,500 to support the online marketing of the program. So this is a great place to start. You're able to get that account, account manager and then use that to identify other supports that they have. And even on this website, and I'll put this link into the chat for you as well, if you're following along. So they have a great vendor directory. So if you do need support, because you're able to get the grant to now do marketing, but if you need marketing help, they have a great full directory of vendors. And also, if you have a business or know somebody that can offer marketing help, this is a great place to sign up because people that are getting marketing grants, they would be coming here to find a vendor to use. So a lot of times with these grants that are out there, it's one thing to apply for the grant and get it directly. But it's another thing to be a provider for the grant. So I know the BBPA with their Bates program, they were bringing on vendors closer to the beginning. Not sure if they're still bringing on vendors, but it's always good to ask them. So if you go to their website and send them a note just to say, hey, are you still accepting vendors that can help entrepreneurs with their business plans or their cash flow projections or their accounting? 
or also with um, Digital Main Street, if you come to this site where it's the vendor directory, so I'll put this in, you're able to sign up to be a vendor in this directory. So if you offer marketing services, you're able to uh, be an option for people that are getting this money. So keep that in mind if these are any services that you're able to provide. So we'll go to the one that is coming up shortly. So my main street, this one is, so digital main street used to be for only like brick and mortar companies. And then they opened it up to people that are working from home or have uh, co-working spaces, like working out of co-working spaces. The my main street program, this one is designed for again, brick and mortar. They do, identify that you have to be like on a main street. I'm not sure how, uh, I guess if that's mandatory that you have to be on a main street front facing, but if you do have a brick and mortar store, or if you know somebody that has a brick and mortar store, please do share this grant with them because it's gonna be opening up, oh, I think tomorrow. Yes, so February 15th, where you're able to get up to $20,000 to support uh, your business. And then for nonprofit organizations, if you support Main Street, they call them community activators, you're able to also get funding. So we'll jump into both just to take a quick peek. So the one for uh, the business sustainability program, you'll see they have a total of 6.5 million and this is non-repayable contributions. So same thing, they're contributing to the business and you don't have to repay it. I'm excited for that one. For sure. Oh, did somebody have a question or was that just jump in? All right. So yeah, the business sustainability program, because they're doing 20,000 in direct business funding, this is one of the one and you'll see, okay. So 325 brick and mortar businesses is the target. So what happened before with the raise grant was they had oh, I believe it was 2.5 million or 5 million. And once the funding is dispersed, they close it. So it wasn't so much like about your business plan or your cash flow projections. I mean, you do have to apply and tell the story of your business, but really it goes based on until the money runs out. So for this one, again, if you have a brick and mortar business, so it does mention like located on main streets. I don't know what they qualify as a main street. So we can definitely dig in and ask a few more questions. But if you do want to get updates, I'll put this link into the chat. So you'd be able to sign up. And I guess tomorrow they're going to send out a notification that it's open. But yes, if you have a brick and mortar business, I would, even if it's not on a main street, because again, we're going to find out what they classify as a main street. I would still apply if you do have a brick and mortar business. So stay tuned for this one. And I'll put this one into the chat as well, just in case you wanna open it up and save this one. So one thing that they do identify is that it's made to businesses that employ between one and 50 staff. You have demonstrated revenue growth. So it's not for pre-revenue businesses. You do have to be generating revenue. And by all means, if you have a brick and mortar business, you should be generating revenue. It's difficult to be paying rent with no revenue. And they do want, so you do have to provide a business case on how the funding will strengthen your current existing capacity and support your growth. So this is where, again, you want to be able to explain how this money is gonna support improving your business. So really straightforward. Uh, this is gonna be one of the programs that we're gonna do a working group around. So if you're, do you have a brick and mortar business and you're interested and you, as it opens, you might feel stuck. We are going to be doing a specific workshop about this one. So stay tuned for that. But I did want to just check how their community activator program is, because this might be something, especially if you're running a nonprofit. So let's see. So for community projects in Southern Ontario, designed to draw visitors and increase local vibrancy. So this program supports high impact place making projects that seek to revitalize neighborhoods and reimagine public spaces, including main streets, downtown strips and plazas. 
as vibrant and inclusive places to work for everyone. So this will be this funding will be allocated to provide non-repayable contributions of up to two hundred and fifty thousand to support seventy-five community nonprofit projects. So again, they said more details will be provided in February. So within a couple of weeks, we should know what's going on. But if you have an idea for a community project, it's going to a nonprofit. So this is where you might want to partner with a nonprofit to say like, hey, this is an idea that we could possibly go after and you can see if you're successful. Uh, do see a hand pop up. Empress, did you want to go ahead? Hi, good day. Hi. Hello. Um, I hear you mention nonprofit a lot while talking, uh, talking about this grant. Is it easier to get grants tr through nonprofit? Because uh, I have a for-profit um, organization. So I was wondering if it's easier to have to get a grant for nonprofit or is the same thing for for-profit? For right. So typically grants are designed for nonprofits, but we have seen more grants being available for for-profits as well. So this is where I typically focus on for-profit grants. We might do another info session later in the month or next month for nonprofits only, because that's where you get into more of like the Ontario Trillium Foundations, uh, the Metcalf Foundations, and you know, all the foundation type funding. So typically there's a lot more money as grants for nonprofits, but there definitely is grants for for profits as well. I was just noticing that this community activator one is for nonprofits, but the business sustainability program, this is for for profits. Okay. Yeah. And so this is where, again, when you're running a for profit, getting a grant is usually like bonus, kind of icing on the cake because it's, the timelines for grants are very tricky. It usually helps to amplify something that you're already doing. It's, it's more difficult to start a business using grants rather than a nonprofit is usually designed for that. But I appreciate the question, thanks. All right. Uh, so just wanna check, were there any other questions about this one? Again, uh, the applications are gonna open tomorrow. So we'll be able to get a bit more details on that. Well, we did want to continue on to the next one. Oh, share my screen again. All right. So one thing with for profits is understanding the different grants that are also out there for social enterprise. And two of them that were just out one is the social finance fund, which initially had the investment readiness program. So that was grants for social enterprises that needed to become investment ready. So those grants, and for the term social enterprise, when you're coming from the for-profit lens, it's a business that now has positive community impact. So they use the profits that they make for their business to create positive community impact. And on the other side, the nonprofit side, it, they already have, I guess they're running as a nonprofit, so they have the positive community impact. When they create an income generating activity, that becomes their social enterprise. But the, the idea that they create does have to stand alone as a business. So if they are just doing like a bake sale and raising money for the nonprofit, that wouldn't qualify as a social enterprise. It would have to be uh, a business operation that is viable and sustainable and the profits help to support the operations of the nonprofit. So that's the definition of a social enterprise. And now there's a lot more money being put into this space. The social finance fund that is, well, was an $800 million pool of funds being invested into the social finance space. And then the investment readiness program that was, they carved out about a hundred million out of the uh, social finance fund to be able to put into getting social enterprises ready for investment. So that was a grant program and they are working on version 3.0. They did two cycles of it. So it was, yeah, one cycle at 50 million, the second at 50 million, and they're working on the third cycle. So not confirmed just yet, but stay tuned for that. And then something like the 
uh, Foundation for Black Communities Big Ideas Grant. So initially, you would have read the grant and we did a lot of info sessions about it, and it was geared towards nonprofit. So as a for-profit, we didn't really know where we fit until you did see that they allowed for unincorporated groups. So this is where, as a for-profit business, and you have this positive community impact, so you're a social enterprise, you needed to kind of take off the business hat and put on the community hat and then put in an application specific to the community project that you wanted to do that would support the Black community. So we had to really talk through a lot of people that thought that they didn't qualify because they weren't a nonprofit, but they actually could still get their ideas funded by being an unincorporated collaborative group and work with an incorporated partner like ACBN to be your nonprofit partner. So we were able to support more applications getting in, even though you couldn't apply directly as a for-profit. So this is where as social enterprise type funding starts to develop, you want to make sure that you have a clear idea on how you want to positively impact the community. Because once that's clear, there's funding for that that typically you don't need to be an incorporated nonprofit for. So instead of your business using all of those profits to support the community, you can still get grants so that you can do the community work and you're not draining your personal or personal savings or your business savings. Because I've seen where a business starts to suffer because it's trying to fund and do the community work. It gets very difficult. So I just want to say, if you're trying to do both, you do want to look for grants to either support the business or also support the community work that you want to do. So these were two examples of that. And if you do have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us because every situation is unique. So the, based on the business that you're running and the work that you want to do in the community, we can help you structure to see what types of grants are out there. Uh, the FFBC one was a great one. Uh, more like these are going to be coming out as the social finance fund starts to unveil this. I think there's like $700 million that they're starting to roll out. I think half of it this year, the next half within a year or so. So keep tuned for this. Uh, oh, Empress. Yes, you can go ahead. Yes, I come here to learn, right? And you got to ask questions when you to yes, learn, please. right? <laughs> All right. So um, I'm a hairstylist and my I registered my business as a sole proprietorship, mm -hmm. but I want to like um, further it, like to get it to, uh, as a bigger organization, mm -hmm. right? But I, it's a for, it's a for, it's a for, 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 for profit organization, right? Mm -hmm. So to get a grant to, to help with that, is it like easy for me to get it as a sole proprietorship or I have to change it into a corporation. Yeah, as a sole proprietor, it's pretty difficult. It would be, especially if you're looking to expand and grow, I would start to look at incorporating the business and then also using grants to expand and scale up a company is also difficult. There's not a lot of grants. The only one that I saw that really helped with that was the investment readiness program. So if that one comes back out for version three, I would look at that one, you can get up to $100,000 and it was to really fine tune a social enterprise and grow it. But other than that, there aren't usually a lot of grants that help you scale up companies. That's usually where you need to look at if um, debt financing would work or getting investment if you're ready to scale and grow. So I wouldn't rely on grants to scale up the company. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah, if there's any other questions, you can let me know. I'll just jump into, and as I mentioned, what's best to help scale up companies. I do like to talk about loan programs. I know it's a grant info session, but the grant cycle timelines are very difficult to navigate. And that's why it's hard to grow a company using grants. Typically, you'd want to either look at microloans, uh, lines of credit, or bigger loan programs like the uh, Black Entrepreneur Loan Programs where you can get up to 250000 Those can really help you scale up your company. And because you're able to get equipment, uh, leasehold improvements, 
and also working capital so that you can start to scale and like bring on a team to grow your company. These ones, your credit score typically does have to be over 650. When it's under 650, that's where you might want to look at different microloans like ACBN has our microloan, uh, Access Community Capital Fund or Rise Asset Development. Stuff like Meridian, usually around 600 plus and Face Coalition, same thing. Uh, they're looking for 600 plus and Alterna, typically 620 or above. So based on what stage you're at, based on credit score, based on where the business is, this is where you can start looking for bigger dollars and loan programs typically pay out quicker than grant programs because grants usually three to six months, you're, three to six months you're waiting and it's not guaranteed. So we don't want to rely on grants. We do want to look at all different types of funding. And one thing that we started working on in our funding spreadsheet is not just loans, but also like equity. So different angel groups, different um, venture capital groups. So we're going to start filling out a lot of this contact information so that when you're ready to pitch to somebody that can invest in your company, we can actually point you in the right direction to pitch for investment. And again, that's something like uh, the National Angel Capital Organization. ACBN is one of the few Black-focused organizations that is part of NACL. So we're in here trying to navigate where is the money that you can access so we can point you in the right direction so that you can pitch and get investment. So stay tuned for uh, this development. Because like I said, scaling your company with grants is difficult, but using larger loans or investment is one of the best ways. And speaking of investment and pitching, we did a delegation downtown to uh, pitch for uh, auditioning for Dragon's Den. And they did say there's another date coming up. So March 23rd, if you feel ready to pitch your business to the Dragon's Den, please do... Um, come with us downtown to the CBC building. They're going to be doing open auditions on March 23rd. So more information about that will be coming out soon. So I just wanted to give you a sneak peek that we're going to be heading back down there Saturday, March the 23rd. All right. And really to remind you, if you do feel stuck, if you feel overwhelmed, we exist to see you win. And so our grant writing services are really here to make sure that you're able to navigate anything that you see that you qualify for. We want to make sure that you don't miss it. So we do our best to do info sessions, to do grant working groups so that you can really give it an attempt on your own. And then once you do get stuck, then you can reach out to us and we can help you get unstuck so that you can get your application in. If you if the info sessions and the working groups allows you to get that application in, that is the best and again, cost effective way. But a lot of times you might feel stuck. We can definitely support you in getting access to that. So one thing that we are going to be doing for the business sustainability program, that's the next one where our working groups, they're typically $75. So if it's a grant that you're working on and you get stuck and you want to work with a group of us as we're going through it, the working groups I've seen as the, one of the best ways to get unstuck and get your application in. Oh, I do see there's a link. Let me see if this is active. Oh, okay, it is active. Yes. So I'll put this into the chat so that if you were interested in this my Main Street yeah. uh, Business Sustainability Program. We're going to be doing a working group right. on no, Tuesday, February 20th. All right. Oh, was there a question? Uh, Karen, I thought I saw your hand go up. You can go ahead. I was just going to say that Domisani was saying Desjardins does have a grant to help for profits. Yes. I know Desjardins it was open last year and I think they're going to be doing the decisions in March. So for those that apply for Desjardins, yes, that is for profit. Um, the American Express grant that was open last year and that's for for profit. 
uh, the visa, she's next program. And I'm mentioning these and I didn't mention it during the presentation because they are closed right now. So Desjardins, American Express, the visa one, when they do reopen, we typically try to update this funding spreadsheets with what is active. So the for-profit grants, you'll see them here. So yeah, like Digital Main Street, the Can Export one, uh, Startup Company, American Express is closed, uh, Toronto Enterprise Fund is closed. So this spreadsheet gives you a bigger overview of all that's available, but this one, yeah. If we're trying our best to keep on top of it. And I'll get you the link. I know the best way is actually on my website. Where did I put it? When you go to ryanoneillnight.com, up at the top, you can access the spreadsheets. Where did it go? So I'll put that into the chat. Oh, there we go. So this link here, the available business grants and loans. If you click that, you're able to get access to the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Sophia, you can go ahead. Yes, so one, if you can please share that link, <laughs> that would be great. Yes, I put that in. Uh, <laughs> and mm -hmm. my next question is, I remember in a previous uh, session that it was brought up that Digital Main Street now, I believe the person had said that they now uh, open their application to, if you're not a brick and mortar, Mortar, is that still the case or? Yes. So Digital Main Street, they opened it up to uh, like people that have businesses from, oh my gosh, at home businesses. So mm -hmm. yes, there's a new one called My Main Street. That one is for brick and mortar only. Okay. So the regular, so the original name one, Digital Main Street, mm -hmm. that one I can now look at in terms of being a home-based business. Yes, yes. Okay, I just wanted that clarification. Yeah, all right. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, Karen, you can go ahead. Um, Jacqueline is asking uh, if we can, are you going to give access to the funding spreadsheet? Yes, I put the link to my website that is in the chat. And then at the top on the website, if you click on available business grants and loans. Perfect. It'll Thank get you, you access to the spreadsheet. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So one thing, uh, as I mentioned, if you'd like more of a go at your own pace, but you do want to get the grant blueprint done, our Grant Hunter University is the best way. And the beautiful thing about the university is you really get behind the scenes and you get access to like myself and our other grant writers when you have questions. So you get access to all the videos that explain all the different sections of a grant, where of course, where to research and find them, but then all the different things that like the, the, the checklist of what you, the notes you have to hit when writing a grant. So making sure your story is solid, making sure you have a proper work plan, understanding that the work plan should feed into the budget and the budget tells that story of how you're gonna execute all those pieces each each individual piece we go we do a video about it so if you want to go like step by step and make sure that your application is really solid and your blueprint ready to go for any grant that you find in the future i would definitely look into and because it's go at your own pace uh, when we do the challenge that's like a full week and every day we're hitting different sections it can be overwhelming for oh let me see if this one works that link does not work so the Grant Hunter University, I will get that link and we'll share it out in the follow-up where you'll get access to the slides. So that one I'll share with you after, but it's really good if you want to get that blueprint done ahead of finding grants, because usually when we find a grant, we're then scrambling to answer all the questions and that causes us to get stuck as well. So the blueprint really helps you get prepared for any grant that you're going to find in the future. Another thing to mention, if you do want just full, we do it for you, as we call it, modify, so making others do it for you, 
depending on the budget that you're currently working with for your nonprofit or your for-profit, we have different tiers and different costs. So if you're under 30,000, again, the $1,500 is amazing because we work with you for 90 days. And at any of these levels, we work with you for 90 days, but it's really for those that are just getting started. And when you get those initial grants written, that becomes your blueprint. So you can actually use it to go after other grants so if you look at it, you're getting three grants for 1500, which is 500 each. Typically we charge 1500 plus per grant. So looking at these types of um, services allows you to get really comfortable and work alongside one of our experts to get those initial grants done. Then it becomes easier for you going forward. But keep in mind, if you do need support with us doing it for you, we do have that available. Or if you just want us to write individual grants on your behalf on your own, and you notice, because this is where I try to tell people to game the system. So something like a provincial or a federal grant, typically it will cost $3,000 each. But if you're working with us for 90 days, and let's say you pay this $1,500, get us to write a difficult grant. Because <laughs> that way you get one of the more difficult grants written and you can use that as your template instead of paying $3,000 just for one. So just keep that in mind if you're going after any of these grants and they're thousands of dollars. Working with us for 90 days allows us to get you three of them. So make sure that we do one of these difficult ones for you. All right. And again, if you wanted a bit more support with uh, the grants or just understanding what is available for you. I would scan a QR code, but hold on, let me actually grab the link as well. So that way I'll put this link into the chat. When you sign up, you'd be able to book a call with us. We can support you in wherever you feel you are right now. If you're stuck, we'll help you get unstuck, but looking forward to working with you. And I know we went, a bit over time, but I'm able to stick around and answer any questions. Just give me one sec while I log into, I think I'm supposed to be in a meeting right now, but they don't need me to talk, so it's all good. Um, let's see. All right, so we do have to fix this one because this should actually be, our business sustainability one, which was here. So this is the actual next event coming up. So if you're interested in joining us for this, I'll put the link in the chat one more time. So this one, we're gonna be writing the My Main Streets grant, which is the business sustainability program. If you're a nonprofit thinking to go for the community activator, we'll think of uh, a date to do that working group because ACBN, we will definitely be going for that one. So if there's, if you're in a downtown or on a main street and you wanna do some sort of activation, connect with us so that maybe we can partner and get funding to do your idea. But this business sustainability program, this one is focused on a brick and mortar business that you can get up to $20,000 to grow your business. So, oh, Empress, you can go ahead. Okay, so you spoke about the loan program and you were saying that your credit have to be like over 650 mm. to get in. Is that all you have to prove your, your credit or you have any have to show um, other stuff? They do ask for other stuff. Usually you have to provide your financials for the past couple of years. Uh, they do ask for your notice of assessment. So it's really the business plan, cash flow projections, um, past history, so your financial statements, and your credit score has to be over a certain amount. So there are a lot of variables, but it can definitely be done. So don't be, um, yeah, don't be alarmed by what they're asking for. We'll help you put that together. Yeah. All right. Uh, I did see a question from Hunter. As a nonprofit, one of the grants we can apply for, the wording states that we need a letter from the municipality so that we can be paid so the grant can get a tax receipt. What exactly are we asking from the municipality? So that I'm not positive. 
do you which are you talking about a specific grant because i'm not sure which one is asking that hunter did you want to go ahead yeah can you hear me yes. um great it's it's a co-op grant for capital funding and and it's for not-for-profits um but the thing that they want is they want a letter from the municipality so that they can um they they send the municipality the money the municipality mm -hmm. then sends it back to the not-for-profit and get and then the, the company gets a tax receipt because the, the not-for-profit can't give a tax receipt but the municipality can that's how to understand it but i'm not exactly sure if that's right yeah it's sounding like the municipality would be playing the role of a trustee for the grant application so you're asking them that we're applying for this grant they need the municipality to play the trustee role so would you be willing to write a letter on our behalf saying that you're willing to take on the money to disperse to us and then the municipality like you said would be able to provide the tax receipt because they're getting the money directly from the funder okay all right that's great thank you so much yeah my pleasure all right yeah and i'm still here if there's any additional questions otherwise do enjoy the rest of the afternoon don't make me don't feel like i'm holding you up hello oh Petra. yes you can go ahead oh oh hi ryan how are you very good very good okay awesome hi yeah i was one i had a question so i'm one of the directors of a non-profit radio station um <laughs> Yeah, but we're also in the process of establishing programs for the community. Mm -hmm. So I was, mm -hmm. I was thinking, what type of funding should we apply for? And is there anything in relation to the radio um, station component that we would have to keep into consideration? Yeah, I haven't seen anything specific to radio, but for nonprofit, oh, actually, let me share my screen. Because there's a few grants that came online recently. Okay, One perfect. Is the Youth Opportunities Fund. So okay, one, perfect. Yeah, they're accepting expressions of interest for the test and scale. So let me grab this one. Let's see. Yeah, so it's due April 17th. Okay. And I'll put this into the chat for you so you can check it out. Okay, perfect. And even I saw one. Capital grant might work here. Capital grant, OTF. This Metcalf Foundation, mm -hmm. somebody sent me a note that they had a grant open right now as well. Let's see if I can find it on the flag. Okay, thank you. So it's called the Opportunities Fund, but I want to give it the actual link to the grant for you. Okay. All right, so I'll put this into the chat as well. Okay. All right. Oh, and OTF, I did see the capital grant is also good. Where's the capital one? Uh, Eco Ambassador, just saying this one is open. Okay, so this one's due March the 6th. So if you do want to improve community facilities and spaces, you're able to get the capital grant from Ontario Trillium Foundation. So keep this oh, okay. in mind. Yes. I'll put yeah, most definitely. Well. I'm sorry, what was what is um what is what does OTF stand for? Yes, the yeah. Ontario Trillium Foundation. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, was there Thank any you very much. additional <laughs> questions? Oh, my pleasure.
And again, if you're when you're going through it, if you get stuck, let us know. Okay, most definitely. Yes. Thank you. All right. As I said, if you got other stuff to do, feel free to go get it done. But I'm here if you have any. And I will tell you a secret. Now is like one of the best times to ask me questions. Because I'm usually, I'm not the greatest at answering my phone. So even though you might get my phone number, you usually have to go through like the whole booking platform. I am literally like not doing anything for the next 20 minutes. So if you have a burning question, I am here. Uh, do other provinces have comparable to OTF? I've been trying to find those. I haven't really found anything comparable, but provinces do have their own grant programs. But we haven't done a lot of grants outside of Ontario. So I would say yes, but we'd have to do a bit more digging to see exactly what they call it and the process to apply for those ones. But yeah, typically each province has a grant program. My pleasure. All right. Okay, so I'm assuming everybody that's on here, especially if you've never written a grant before, you will get your first grant in this month. We will find one for you. And if you have gotten your grants in before, make sure that you're sharing what grant you're finding so that we can spread the wealth. But yeah, uh, just checking in, make sure. Was there any other questions? Go ahead. Hey, it's Hunter again. Just yes. how how far ahead, once we, we find a grant, how far ahead do you recommend that we get all that stuff together and send it in? Should we wait or should we just get it all done and send it in right away? Yeah, as when the grant the application is put together as best you can get it done, as soon as you can put it in is the better. And it's only because I've seen a lot of funding where it's somewhat rolling. So the ones that come in first, if there's enough good ones that come in, then it kind of closes because they're like, well, we ran out of money. So I wouldn't wait to the end, like waiting for, I don't know if you're waiting for, like if you're waiting for a support letter or something very specific that you need to submit, then yeah, wait till you have like all your stuff. But I wouldn't hold on to it because at the deadline, it, it becomes a melee. So as best you can get it in, I'll put it in quicker. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, I see a question. What about grants for Black entrepreneurs? You know, we haven't seen too many specific to Black entrepreneurs recently. The one through the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, that one in partnership with the Black Opportunity Fund. And I did hear uh, a bit of rumor that the Black Opportunity Fund has another one coming out soon. So let me see. Actually, I'll share my screen and see if they have anything that they announced today. Because mm. yeah, this Black Entrepreneur Program, this one is the $2,000 grant that's in partnership with the Chamber. They had the Black Food Restaurant one and the Black Business Loan. So this one is the line of credit that they did for for profits. So I haven't seen too many black focused grant programs for for profit businesses, but I will keep on the hunt. Uh Sophia, you can go ahead. Uh my next question is Is it is it Sheridan that you're connected with? Yes. Okay. Are are they still doing the Rise grant or the Rise with yeah. Ed? So that one just launched. So I think they're taking applications till the end of the month. Okay. Do you have any information on it or? Yeah, hold on. I will grab, where did I put that information now? Lord have mercy. Because that one isn't really a grant. It is. Oh, it isn't. It's okay, like, sorry. Um, like an incubator program. 
Okay. I just heard the name and I didn't get a chance to look at it. So I figured I would ask you. Gotcha, gotcha. Hold on, I'll put it into the chat here. Yeah, so for this one, they're doing an online program for social entrepreneurs. So, and I believe it's like six months. So it's more like an incubator and you're getting like services for your business. I didn't see that you're getting actual cash funding like as a grant for your business. Okay, so is this similar to what BBPA? No, it's more similar to what the chamber is doing, where the chamber, like you're signing up for a three to six month business plan improvement program. Mm -hmm. This seems similar where you're signing up to go through like a incubator program with Sheridan Edge to help you improve your business. And then you're getting access to like, I think their co-working space, different mentors, different uh, business credits for services. So I guess it has elements of both. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? one thing i'll let you know the social finance fund when that one does come out it is going to be investments so it isn't direct like grants that they're doing unless they reboot the investment readiness program which was one of their best grant one of the best grant programs that i'd seen especially for for-profit businesses so we're really working hard at advocating for 3.0 of that but the social finance fund is going to have a lot bigger dollars, but you are getting investment. So it does have to be repaid. But if you're looking at scaling your social enterprise, I'm noticing that one's going to be really fruitful for um, like growing social enterprises in Canada. So we're definitely watching closely, but if the grant program does come back, we'll let you know. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, again, uh, I'm here if you have questions. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. One thing to keep in mind, we are going to do the working group for the My Main Street. The other one that we wanted to do was around the Ontario Trillium Foundation grants. And since one of them is due March 6th, look out for that happening within the next couple of weeks. And the Youth Opportunities Fund that's one of the grants that we had been most successful with. I think we've gotten it three times. So if you're interested in applying for the Youth Opportunities Fund, I would definitely come to one of our working groups. We might actually do an info session specifically on that grant. And then if you need help with the actual writing, we'll do a working group around it. But for sure, we're going to be putting in an application. So if you're interested, we always love... Uh, kind of over the, peering over the shoulder as we do the applications and then helping you to get yours in as well. All right. But yeah, I guess have a great rest of the day, everyone. We'll touch base soon. We'll send a follow-up with uh, next steps. Looking forward to seeing you at one of our next sessions, but always appreciate you taking the time to be here. And I just hope that it's of value you take away uh, inspiration to get your applications in. No more sitting on the sidelines. The only way that we get this funding is our applications have to be in. So do not miss the money because we don't put in our, our application. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. It was great. And we learned a lot. Well, I learned a lot today. So hey, yeah, glad to appreciate hear that. it a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Good Thank seeing you. you. But yes, we'll talk soon. Have a great one.